we're back on the home edition of Perspectives. Our guest on this segment is Nathan Stook. Nathan is the uh, CEO and creator, actually, of uh, something called the Whisper Internet. And we're going to get into that, and he's going to explain it. But I, I got to tell you, this is something you, you need to pay attention to. I uh, want to welcome you, Nathan. Good to have you here, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I think this will be it'll be great to talk about this. Where are you again? So I am in Mascouda, Illinois, uh, just on the Illinois side of St. Louis, Missouri. Well, it's a clear signal, man. It looks really good. I'd like to know more about the keg that's on your bookcase, but we'll talk about that it, later. Yeah, everybody <laughs> asks about that. I don't even drink, but yes, yes, we can talk about that. <laughs> well, there's a dog running around somewhere without his keg. Uh, you're, you're here to talk about the Whisper Network. What is that? So our Whisper Network is our, our wireless network. So we do fixed wireless. It's just like cable and DSL, except we don't require a phone line or cable uh, to provide you service, uh, which works really, really well out in the rural markets uh, where the houses are much more spread uh, spread apart and people haven't built internet, wired internet uh, to the people who live in the rural markets. As it stands right now, according to the figures I've seen, uh, there, there are millions of folks out there without internet service who live outside uh, incorporated areas. What do your numbers show? Oh, I, I think they're higher than what the reports show um, because there's a difference between having no internet and having internet that works, <laughs> right? And yeah. a lot of people who are on the outskirts of town even some people in town, their their internet isn't suffice. It doesn't work for today's usage. You know, multiple people at home using uh, streaming services for for schoolwork and for working, uh, and it, it's kind of changed our, our needs as as internet people who use the internet. And that's something that we're looking at trying to solve uh, for the rural uh, rural communities. Is it uh, a wired situation or is it satellite? So our service is similar to satellite, but we don't go all the way up to the satellite. Um, we go from local towers. Uh, so we have all the benefits of, of having wireless where we install on a tower or a grain elevator, a water tower, and then anybody that's within range, about six, maybe eight, nine miles of that tower uh, can get service from, from that tower. So we don't have to actually launch things into the satellite or into the sky in the orbit, uh, but we also don't have to run a cable down the road to every single person that needs service. I see. What a great idea, man. I mean, that's that's really good. Talk to me about point to point. Yeah. So our point to point services that we provide, um, that's where you have it's one one connection is on one tower and then another piece of equipment is on another tower. And that would be a point to point. Right. Only one connection to one. Uh, we use what's called a point to multi point connection to connect multiple houses. Uh, so if you're on a tower, then you you connect to you know, 5, 10, 15, 100, 100 locations can connect back to that tower. And then the service goes over the point to point connection to somewhere you get to the internet, right? You either, it's a fiber connection somewhere uh, or in a, in a data center. So we're literally building the internet out into these rural markets. So then if I understand correctly, let's say a customer down the line is not gonna lose anything in terms of quality because of the way of the thing is transmitted? Mm, that's very perceptive of you. So we are what's called a share me shared medium. So as long as we design our network correctly, uh, then we should have enough bandwidth for everyone. Um, when, when COVID hit and everyone was at home and, and upload become very, very important, we had a lot of upgrades along with a lot of other ISPs that had to upgrade their network to be able to support that increased demand. Uh, and that's something that we have to manage very, very carefully because, like I said earlier, you know, having internet but having it not work is almost just as bad as not having internet at all. And, and we try to manage that and make sure that everybody gets the service that uh, they should be getting. Well, it's a very, very interesting setup because I'm, I mean, the first thing that hit me uh, now, didn't, it wasn't this way five years ago even, but now so many people rely on the internet to communicate with their doctor, for goodness sake. Mm, absolutely. Um, I mean, this can be a life-saving utility 
right off the top. Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. It, it's, you know, before when, when your internet was down in the morning, you said, oh, that's okay. The kids are going to school and, and mom and dad are, are going into work and, and, you know, they'll have it fixed by the afternoon or evening uh, and, and when we get back. Now, if you wake up in the morning and your internet isn't working, you can't go to school, you, you miss your doctor's appointment, you, you, you know, you can't work. And, and that's, that's major. That's a, a super, super major issue uh, for a, a lot of Americans, more than you might think, you know, more than just the, the list of people who can't get service. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that, that need much, much better service than what they have options for. I can also see benefits for business uh, mm -hmm. in terms of ordering or filling orders. Oh, I, I think so. And it, it's interesting how the internet, I, I kind of think the internet is more important than water. Uh, and you might say, wait a minute, how, how can you say it's more important than water? Well, as a, as a citizen, I can buy water at the store, I can transport water, and I can store water. So I can be self-sufficient if I need to be with my water supply. Um, as a normal citizen, I can't transport the internet, I can't store the internet, and I can't create a connection to it. And, and in now, in today's society for businesses and for, for uh, residents and people connecting, you have to have that internet connection. It's so, so important uh, that you can stay connected to the rest of the world and, and know what's going on out there and order different things and learn different things. And it, it all kind of hinges around that internet connection now. You know, I don't want to drag you into the uh, political arena, as it were. But uh, it seems to me like uh, this is something that uh, Congress should have looked at a long time ago because with the development of the Internet and the spread of the Internet, what essentially happened was they just flat ignored the folks in the rural communities, didn't they? Mm. They've tried a couple different programs, um, but it, it, it's just really, really hard. And what I'm, what I'm real excited about is this last round of funding that the, the, the FCC did, or two rounds ago, I guess, the Connect CAF, the Connect America Fund, the companies that want to build out and are excited about building out are the ones that won the funding. So no longer are they giving funding to the, you know, the telcos or, or the companies that were like, oh, we'll take funding and we'll build out, we promise, and then they miss their deadlines. They, they don't build out and they don't provide what they should do. Uh, we, we are innovators and we, are, we love providing service to people. And we're now one of the winners of that Connect America Fund, and that's allowing us to, to build out. Uh, so I, I think the I think the government's starting to get it right, actually, and, and helping the companies that are excited. They, they put some ramifications in there if you don't build out and some pretty steep penalties. So we're excited to do it, and, and some of the federal funds we've been getting just allow to, us to do it faster than we were able to do before. Well, let's say that uh, let's say that I'm sitting on some wonderful land in a rural setting, and I can't get internet service there because of where I live. What's the first thing I need to do? How do I contact you and get the information on hooking me up to the internet? Right, so the best thing to do is to go to our website, Whisper without an H, so W-I-S-P-E-R-I-S-P.com. Go to our website, fill out our, our, our request uh, um, information, and then we'll determine if we can get you service or not. And if we can't, uh, then we'll talk to you about how we can. Um, is there? Well, how do, I'm sorry, let me interrupt you. How do they get to yeah. the website if they don't have internet? Well, that is a conundrum. Hopefully they, it works on their, their cell phone or they can go into the office or they can go to a friend's house uh, or they can uh, give us a call uh, at 618-206-4190. Uh, 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 and that'll that'll ring through to us, and they can call us if they if they can't get on the internet. We can get that on the screen uh, a little bit later, so folks will know Absolutely. how to reach you. And it's called the Whisper Network. Uh, Whisper Internet, yes. The Whisper Internet, got it. Right. Uh, what's your game plan for down the road? Do you want to see this spread to all the country? Um, I'd like to. Right now, you know, we started just in our hometown uh, in, in O'Fallon, Illinois, and then we grew from there, and then we kind of surrounded St. Louis, and then we um, bought a company down in Joplin, Missouri, and that per gave us service down into Oklahoma and Kansas City. Uh, for me, I, I want to make sure that we provide really, really good service everywhere that we do provide service. 
if that allows us to go across the nation and there's people who need service, then we're, we want to be there. Um, but our goal is not to be big just to be big. Our goal is to make sure that we're providing amazing service for our customers and, and have amazing employees that love to work at Whisper. You know, many, many years ago, there was a fellow, I think, I could be wrong on this, but I think his name was Tesla, who had the idea of electronic or electrical transmission without wires, mm -hmm. transmitting electricity, you know, through the air. Uh, but this, and that never worked out, but this seems to be the kind of thing that's going to hit the ground running. Oh, it, it's amazing. And some of the advancements that we have coming out, you know, everybody knows about 4G and 5G. And we all know how well our cell phones don't work, right? If, yeah. you know, especially in the rural market, you know, if you, if you turn just wrong, it doesn't work and everything. Um, uh, the advances we have coming up uh, here shortly are, are just going to be amazing. They're exponentially better than what we have uh, available to us today. It allows us to provide amazing service to people, reliable service that's there when they need it. And, and we're in the infancy of what we really know about wireless. The technology is advancing uh, every year. There's new things coming out and, and big advancements as well. Okay, we've got about 30 seconds. Would you please Give us the address and the phone number one more time. Absolutely. So our um, our mailing address is 9711 Fuser, F-U-E-S-S-E-R, Road, uh, Muscuda, Illinois, 62258. Uh, and then you can also call us at 618-206-4190. Well, Nathan Stuke with Whisper, thank you, my friend, for taking time to visit with yeah. us and to spread the word. And maybe down the road, we can have you back again. Sound all right? Absolutely. I'd love to. Thanks so much for having okay, me. Friend. Be safe out there and wear a mask. That's all the time we have, folks. We're going to break down now and put this puppy in the barn, and we'll see you here next time.